Um, hi everyone, good evening. Uh, we are going to start the national finals of the Entrepreneurship World Cup Bolivia. Today we are um, gathered together to see which one of the 15 teams and the startups that have applied uh, get uh, chosen by a group of uh, selectionate juries uh, to be the representatives of Bolivia in the World Cup of Entrepreneurship, that is the Entrepreneurship World Cup. Uh, welcome to this transmission. We are transmitting through the platform of the Entrepreneurship World Cup and also in the Facebook a live stream of uh, GEM Bolivia, FTE Bolivia, Hub Santa Cruz, and Entrepreneurship World Cup. Uh, to give us some words of introduction and to explain us what we are going to do today in this national final, let me introduce you to René Salomón. He is the MD of GEM Bolivia. He is the Entrepreneurship World Cup Bolivia organizer. And also he is director of FTE, Fundación Trabajo Empresa. Uh, let's uh, hear from him what's about the Entrepreneurship World Cup. René? Thank you, thank you, Fernando. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you to be here. It's a pleasure to be part of this uh, Entrepreneurship World Cup uh, event. Uh, Bolivia has been in this event for the last three years. We had uh, really good experiences and we're going to have the time to share about it. Uh, but now I have to say that uh, uh, over here are the top startups of Bolivia, the finalists of all the, all the process. These startups will advance to a next round uh, that will be completed uh, in a couple of months. Uh, two of you, two of uh, out of the 15 uh, startups that are here, are going to be hopefully in the top 10 of the startup uh, uh, group of the global finalists in October. Uh, just to give you a little bit of uh, information about uh, the Entrepreneurship World Cup, this is an organization based on the Global Entrepreneurship Network. They, they put together this event in order to, to invite 200 uh, countries. We are more than 300,000 people uh, interacting in this process. Uh, what we are doing is uh, looking for ideas, looking for early startups, of, of course, uh, trying to find some growth startups uh, to be better off in this uh, 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 world. The, the idea uh, to have you here is to to have a competition where you can, uh, first of all, uh, be part of uh, this uh, group. Uh, as I say, so uh, 300,000, uh, 200 countries. Uh, the prices that are not really important right now, but uh, just to keep it in mind, uh, is about one million dollars. It will split it between the first one, the second, and the third when you get to the to the world class uh, in order to be there. But uh, something that people, and I, I can say Andres Estensoro that is with us right now, he knows about it. Uh, after this uh, competition, you will become a world-class uh, people. You will be around uh, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs that are trying to be better off in these uh, uh, activities. But first of all, if you go to the next one, Fernando, uh, I would like just to say that uh, the Entrepreneurship World Cup it will give you an, an event where we have uh, five juries or four juries. They are, uh, they are from different countries, but uh, we have invited uh, Jonathan uh, Orkans para que, so he can give us a, a little bit of uh, information and a hello for us. Please, uh, Hi, let's invite. I'm Jonathan Orkans, and I'm the president and the founder of the Global Entrepreneurship Network, and on behalf of all of our global partners, especially the MISC Foundation, I want to welcome you to the Entrepreneurship World Cup. Over the course of the last three years since we kicked off this initiative in 
nations across the world. We've helped more than 300,000 startups to test their ideas. Yes, they've competed for prizes, they've competed for the opportunity to get uh, support, but in the end, all of them have got access to training, to perks, and to the networks of their peers that we hope will help them succeed if they didn't this time around. But this time around, yes, they're competing for a million dollars in prizes and many millions of dollars in perks and other kinds of benefits, not to mention the training and the mentorship and the ongoing support that comes with being a part of the EWC community. We are very, very proud this year that the finals will be in November. We'll be back on back with the Global Entrepreneurship Congress, which is Jen's annual large gathering of the year of all 200 countries that we operate, that we bring together the leaders of those ecosystems with their startups and their investors to really take a close look alongside their governments at what the future has in store for us in this post-pandemic environment. Right now, we're seeing the roaring back of our economies, and it's time for us to take a careful and thoughtful look about where are the tailwinds, yes, but where are the opportunities for us to build back better in this post-pandemic global environment. So we'll be having that Congress, whether you win and get into the EWC 100 and make it to the EWC final stage, uh, it doesn't matter. You're all welcome to join the Global Entrepreneurship Congress in Riyadh in November. If indeed you're ready to get back to live face-to-face -face community building and relationship building, we would love to have you. More information can be made available at gec.co. But today we're focused on the Entrepreneurship World Cup. Welcome. We look forward to meeting all of the startups participating and look forward to seeing some of them indeed at the global gathering to take place in November. So good luck and thank you. Well, it, we should be a big applause about it, but uh, I want to thank also Miss Global Forum. Uh, this group will organize the big event in, uh, in Saudi, Saudi Arabia, uh, held by the Global Entrepreneurship Network, and of course the technology gentle uh, elemental life uh, finish that they, they do also a lot of things with entrepreneurship. So now, uh, Fernando, we're going to go for the next step. I think we have to introduce the judges. Uh, let's go for the first one. Enrique Portillo, a really good friend of us. Uh, he is from Mexico. He, he's been for more than 25 years uh, working at uh, Monterrey Tech. Now he is a CEO of Strategy. Uh, you're going to hear from him when, when the time comes. But uh, I want to welcome Enrique, and thanks a lot to be part of this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rene. My pleasure to be here with you again. Okay, thanks a lot. Cecilia Jacobs, uh, she is a CEO of La Huerta Gourmet. Uh, she works a lot uh, with uh, caterings and deliveries, and now he's involved in using technology to be part of his ideas, and he parts of a lot of things that he's doing. So uh, thank you and welcome again, Cecilia, to the Entrepreneurship World Cup. Thank you very much, and good luck to all the contestants. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks a lot. The next one is Ezra Orozco. Uh, hello, Ezra. Uh, nice to have you here uh, all the way from Guatemala. Uh, technology is so great that we can be from all over the world and be in the same place. And uh, we're lucky to have you here. Uh, he's an entrepreneur. He teaches about entrepreneurship and also he is involved in financing. So welcome again, and we're going to have fun tonight, uh, Ezra. Thank you, Rene. My pleasure to be here. You are all winners, so let's enjoy this time. Freddy, how are you? Thanks a lot to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, as we know, uh, you, you've been around the world. Uh, you've been doing a lot of things about sustainability. And now you're in front of a Swiss contact in Bolivia, and it's going to help us a lot to your points of view, your 
your opening things that you've been doing. And hopefully we're going to have a great time uh, admitting a lot of people to be part of this entrepreneurship workshop. Welcome, Freddy. Hello, Rene. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Nice to be here. Thank you very much to invite me and um, all the luck for everyone. Okay, I think uh, the journey will start. Uh, Fernando, let us know what's going on from now on. As, as you know, Fernando, uh, he is uh, part of uh, Hub Santa Cruz, also in Santa Cruz Innova. Uh, we've been doing a lot of things together in the last uh, almost 10 years, maybe more. And uh, now we have the chance to organize the Entrepreneurship World Cup uh, please, Fernando, let us know what we're going to do and um, from where we started uh, this year. Uh, thank you, Rene. Thank, uh, hi, everyone, again. Uh, for me, it's a pleasure to be organizer and to help uh, Bolivian startups to be known in the world around. Uh, when we started with the organization of a entrepreneurship World Cup in I remember 2019 uh, this is the third one third version that we are organizing with Rene uh, uh, we had like a a very ambitious goal to uh, each year grow uh, the number of uh, applications that we get from uh, Bolivian entrepreneurs, Bolivian startups that uh, want to be known uh, in a global context. Uh, just for you to know, uh, Entrepreneurship World Cup is the world largest and most diverse pitch competition uh, across the world. Uh, it has like uh, three uh, categories for uh, startups that are uh, ideas in early stage startups and startups that are ready for a growth phase. Uh, this year we had uh, 232 applications uh, that started the process in the platform of the Entrepreneurship World Cup. Um, we uh, we uh, selected the ones that were complete and those were classified as submitted. We have like a, a, a some work to do to avoid that uh, applications uh, aren't finished because Sometimes it means that the process is hard to understand or to, to be uh, finished, to complete all the steps necessary to, to finish the application. We are taking that as a homework for the next year. Next, uh, of those 92, six, uh, 67 were approved to be part of a judging panel to select the top 15. Those approved were selected by a, a group of collaborators, uh, we call them pre-judges, that uh, helped us to uh, select the best of the best that were uh, applying to the Entrepreneurship World Cup in Bolivia. From those se uh, 67, you 15 were selected as finalists. So you have been from a long way, from 232 applications, you are the best 15. Today, we are going to select two of you. Those two are the ones that are going to be part of the Entrepreneurship World Cup Global. So in this national uh, World Cup final, 
uh, the part that is from Bolivia will select YouTube. What is going to happen after we uh, select the two with the help of our judges? Uh, they are going to be part of a process uh, that starts the next month. As soon as possible, uh, we are going to uh, to report where, uh, was, which ones uh, were the two selected for the next step. Uh, those finalists from more than 200 countries are going to be part of the Accelerate 2 part program. Uh, in July, that is uh, this month, uh, the, you are going to join all the winners from other countries. You're going to be part of this uh, worldwide uh, program that is going to uh, last until November. On November, the top 100 of those startups that were part of the program are going to be selected. Those that are going to be selected, they can have a, a place to participate in Riyadh a Global Entrepreneurship Congress and be a, invited to, to be part of that. A, in Riyadh, a, they are going to select the top 14 and the top 14 will have the pitch uh, where they are going to select the five winners. Five winners that are going to share the prize pool of one million dollars. Uh, approximately uh, everyone that w wins the pitch competition has already won $25,000 in perks and uh, benefits from the Global uh, Entrepreneurship World Cup uh, sponsors. So uh, to be part of this uh, competition is the access to a large pool of perks that are going to help you to achieve a global uh, and a worldwide presence and uh, importance so you can uh, uh, get more uh, opportunities for your startup. And now... Thank you, Fernando. Yes. Uh, before before we go to the finalists, we're going to go really fast to, to, for them. Uh, I just want to mention five names that they help us uh, a lot in order to go through this process that you mentioned. is Leslie Serna that is with us, the same thing Nicolás Tufino, Denis Garcia, Nair Pérez, and Jairo Romero. All of them help us to, to put together the process. And I think now we're going to start with the startups in, in order that we already talk with all of you. Thank okay. you, Fernando. Let's go. Thank you, René, for the for the mentions, uh, thank you very much for all of five of you to help us with the process. And now uh, we have the finalist pitches. Uh, as you know, we have three, uh, three categories. We are going to start with the idea category. So uh, let me uh, invite to make the pitch, uh, Gradix, the first Pitch of the night. This is how my dream of being a teacher was popped seven years ago. Hi, I'm Christian Soto. I'm the CEO of Gradix. You want a certification? You love community? We give you both. The day I finished my master's degree, 
I thought I'd be accepted as a teacher everywhere. I went with my degree to a university. I was rejected politely. After one and a half years, they reject me again. So I decided to follow a different path and get certified PMP. Besides the struggle to find precise information, I got my certification and immediately that university called me with an offer. That certification changed my life. Like me, 87% of tech people are certified around the world. We spend around 72 hours to have info. More than 35% realize that a mentor is needed. In contrast, just 20% pass their exam in their first attempt. We connect tech people with the right certifications, training, and mentors. Let me tell you how. You can have in Here's an example of the solution. Our revenue projection is selling 200K this year and it will increase 20% every month because the market is huge. We are perfect for doing this because we complement each other quite well. Walter is one of the most well-connected entrepreneurs in Latin America, plus he is also a tech geek. And I'm in the certification and training in the Los demás escuchan, yo no escucho nada. No, no escucho nada. Se, quedó... se cortó, se cortó Gradix. Se cortó. Cristian. That are harder to break and take you to the sky. Which balloon are you looking for? Thank you. Cristian, eh, ya se hicieron los tres minutos. Eh, ¿Nos escuchás? Sí. Yes. Ya. Bueno, hemos tenido problemas con tu con tu audio, pero por favor, eh, tenemos tres minutos para el jurado. Eh, si deja de compartir, por favor. Eh, los tres minutos para el jurado, adelante. ¿Alguna consulta? Sí, solo. Um, okay, in English, of course. Sorry, sorry, I forgot about it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay. Big mistake. Congratulations to to Radix. I just I just uh, realized uh, I I missed the audio for a while, but I didn't hear about your uh, money making process. So if you can tell tell us about that, please. Christian, again, please. I think I think he's having problem with the internet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let me check. Just for a little. Did you hear the question? No, I I didn't hear the question. Please, can you tell us about your money making process? How are you going to make money out of this? Okay. Uh, we are going we're going making money about taking 30 percent of every sell we sell courses and we sell mentoring 
And when we sell mentoring, we, we can sell just one hour, etc. And when we sell courses, we have 36 hours mainly. Okay, thank you. Uh, go ahead, Enrique. Uh, that's a, a good idea. <laughs> uh, well, the thing is, how are you going to differentiate your proposal from all of, of those proposals around the market? Okay, actually, we are just uh, trying to build one platform for every certification in the tech market. So we have about 1,000 certifications, and we need to compare in a better way, in a concise way. It's not a comparison like a Google comparison, it's a comparison like made for every person, made for every certification. So we differentiate uh, from uh, another companies in the concise way to show information and in the I think we lost him. I think, yeah, we lost. Okay, sorry. Uh, uh, I think we finished with uh, Radix. Please be sure that uh, you disconnect all your other family around in the, sometimes somebody is uh, watching a movie or something, uh, that will affect in your internet. Uh, Fernando, who is next? Okay. Uh Let's call the next uh, contest contestant is uh, Abitu. <clears throat> Abitu. Hello. Go ahead, Roger. You have three minutes, please. Go ahead. Excellent. Um, let me share my screen, please. I think another recommendation will be to close all other applications like uh, Outlook and WhatsApp and everything you got in your computer because it's consuming a memory. Exactly. Yeah, maybe, Rene, you can say in advance which, who's going to be next so they can be prepared. Okay, Fernando, uh, let us know who is the next one. And please be sure that you have all things ready. Okay, the next is Kalian. Hello. Roger, do you have it ready? Yeah, sorry, there was a problem with my computer, but I think it is ready now. So. Okay, please go ahead. Okay. Um, okay, so my name is Carlos Aragos. I am the CEO from Rico. Um, so uh, the problem that exists right now in the market, there are uh, if the, the people want to have a, a healthy lifestyle. Uh, most of the young people want to eat better, and there are different things that. So there are different things that there are diff different factors, just the time and the money and the follow up and the knowledge to have this kind of lifestyle. So, uh, for solution for this kind of problem is a nutritional assistant. Um, we want to create an, an application that is based on the on the daily activities, um, and this application will we create a specific uh, a, a specific day plan, uh, and this application will generate different kind of uh, physical activity based on the goals that each customer uh, that each user uh, needs. Uh, to maintain an, a healthy lifestyle. Uh, how this will work or how, uh, what are the things that this application will 
uh, will provide. We are the, we are uh, we are going to show different meals for each day. Uh, uh, we will show the, the meals that you have to eat each day based on your specific requirement. Um, we will recommend some specific food, and we will recommend you what kind of food you don't have to eat. Uh, uh, to well, uh, we will specific we will specify how uh, uh, how much uh, of whether you have to drink. Uh, we will create a specific uh, physical activity and a specific physical plan for you. Um, and of course, we will uh, track all the nutrients that you are uh, eating. Uh, so we will have continuous monitoring about your progress. How is that possible? So we want to implement, we, are, we, want, to, we want to use two technologies. We want to use big data and we are going to use artificial intelligence uh, to, to generate this specific plan for each user. Uh, this will be an automated process, uh, automatic process, of course. Um, how how it will we work? So we will record the wake, age, uh, different daily activities, and the eat and the food that you uh, eat each day. Uh, based on that information, we will identify the the calories and all the nutrients that each user needs. Uh, and based on that information, we are going to recommend different foods and we will create a specific plan for each user. And the last step is to monitor and adapt the plan based on the progress that each user uh, is having with the application. Um, so there are different competi uh, com competitors in the market, but most of these applications just have one specific purpose, like uh, monitoring or use track the activity or use the nutritional. But any application have all these components in one application. Uh, what about the size market? Um, we have about uh, uh, three, uh, 2.5 million uh, of people. That is uh, the TAM. Uh, we want to get uh, the 50% of this uh, of this target. How we are going to make money? We will have a subscription plan, uh, one for free. Uh, Roger, sorry, your time is gone. Three minutes. <laughs> okay, you were in the last one. That's fine. Sorry, yeah. Yes. Sorry. Uh, no please, uh, the jury has have the questions that you want to do. Um, yes, um, I want to. Uh, I want to know how you are going to get to be known. Uh, you need to. There are many apps like the one you are proposing. How are you going to differentiate yourself, and how are you going? What strategy do you have to be known easily and quickly? Okay, so we, we did a research on the market and there are different applications, but each application has a specific purpose. So some applications use track the calories that you eat. Some other applications provide you a specific plans, let's say for gym. Would any of those applications have all this component in one application? So we want to integrate a monitoring, we want to integrate a, a diet plan, and we want to integrate a activity, physical activity, all in one application. So you will have a, you will have a, a, a trainer, you will have a, a, a diet, a, a diet, and you will have a monitoring with, with, uh, with application. Uh, another one. We have we have one minute and forty yes. seconds. Just Go a ahead, please. One. Thank yes. you. Just a quick one. What about your receipts? Does it include uh, uh, ingredients from Bolivia or everywhere? Yes. Yeah, so one of the one of the strategies that we want to use is to have a specific recipe for for a specific countries because most of this application has a lot of recipe, a lot of different uh, meals, but meals that does not exist here in Bolivia that exists in United States or different countries. So we want to target each of the meals for each specific countries. We want to be as much as, as specific as possible. That that will okay, be thank you very much. Sorry, I have to be calling the time. No Sorry, problem. that's my, no my duty. Uh, please uh, let us know, Fernando, who is next and the next one, so it uh, can be ready too. Okay. You're uh, mute. Okay, the next next one is uh, uh, Kalin, and, and next after that is Petrillos. 
Okay. One more time, please. Okay, Colleen, uh, you have your uh, presentation, okay? Uh, your time, you have three minutes. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, my name is Ana Maribel Quispe Suxo and represent Kalin. Over the past decade, food systems have increasingly become extraction machines that reduce or well begin weaken communities and improves the world around us. Bolivia is the sixth largest country in the world with tropical natural forests. The Amazon forest is home to a great variety of exotic fruits, including more than 5 million acai dress and 290 kilos awaje per pound, of which only 1% of its productive potential is used, begin the main economic activity of the guardians of the Amazon. Did you know that you can consume Bolivian foods that increase your neurotransmitter levels to improve your cognitive performance? We are Kalin, producer and market of you, yogurt made with fruits of the Amazon, almost of the Inca and quinoa of the Altiplano with the purpose of straining cognitive development. We are aligned with SDG 8 and SDG 12 with the most advanced quality techniques by perfecting our products every day. And you wonder what is the price is? Our product has a value of 15 Bolivianos, approximately $2.15, at a net weight of 220 grams. The smart niche developed for the Kalin project was to consider the university student po population, from an age range of 18 to 25 years who live in the city of La Paz and El Alto. We are the opportunity to help 43% of indigenous peoples from Bolivia with the capacity toward the conservation of the Amazon, incorporated into the market produce of triple impact through the responsible use of, the, of our exotic fruits. It's my team. Ana Calamani, Henry Wankara, and Jessica Sakaka. Because those are not abstract people out there that we try to help, but our, our life, our own body, our own mind, our own family, our Bolivian brothers, and our culture. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, you're really sharp on your time. Two minutes and 30 seconds. That's great. Uh, we're going to keep those 30 seconds for the jury. Uh, please go ahead. Thank I'll, you. Uh, I, I, I'll take uh, okay, the, the time. Mm, I would like to know uh, one, one of the problems with this um, supplies is the quality. How are you going to assure the quality of your supplies? And, uh, because they are coming from I, uh, from indigenous producer, I, I, I heard. Did you hear? Anna? Anna? We are, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> we are different because of the ingredients that uh, we use, uh, which uh, contribute contribute to the cognitive system, including uh, acai and rich antioxidant cereals. Uh, such a inchi is a brain tonic that improves memory, uh, stress management, and depression, it uh, maintains muscular mass and energy. Yeah, but you are not as, uh, answering my question. The question is, how are you going to assure the quality of, the, of your supplies? We, we work close, uh, closer with our producers. We keep our ingredients natural to maintain their quality. OK, thank you. I, ha I have another question. Uh, can I, Rene? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, thank you. I've been there in Bolivia for several times 
and I enjoy and like acai. I think it's a it's a, a very good product, specifically from Bolivia. My question is, why are you right now thinking only in the market for La Paz, <laughs> uh, only for Bolivia? Why are why are why can't you export this product to the world? Please, Anas. Okay. Um, in in my vision is export um, the superfood because it's um, very important for for, um, for uh, indigenous and peoples. Um, uh, it's very important. Um, uh, I th I think. Um, ex um, ap um, ap <laughs> uh, Be because uh, Bolivia is the perfect starting point in the future we we have plans of exporting the superfood whoever it is important for you the, to contribute to Bolivia's econ economy That's that's the the basis of my question. If if you are trying also to uh, to support Bolivia, Bolivian's economies, economies, uh, why don't you think in the the external market? Well, uh, we already have the six minutes together presentation and the jury. Thank you very much, Thank you. Kalian. Thank you, Enrique. Thank you. Is ready the next one? The next one, Petrillos. Petrillos. Go ahead, Marco Antonio. Okay, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, let's begin. In the last year, the population in Bolivia has grown 28%. It's increased the demands for construction material, especially bricks, which manufacture cause 15% of atmospheric pollution. One important fact is that in average, human beings use 29 bottles per month, of which only four are recycled uh, and the rest end in trash. Hi, my name is Marco Antonio. I am a study industrial engineer. I lead the idea of Pedrillos. It is project which one manufacturing ecology bricks use pet. On July 22nd in this year, Oruro government found clandestine bricks factory, which use more than three tons uh, per day of used dirt, plastics, plastic toys, bags, sports shoes, clothes, rubbers, as foil. This lead into an air extremely polluting and many respiratory diseases explicit in, especially, especially in, in kids. The, the proportional to solve this problem is the manufacturers of pet bricks. The raw material to be used for the manufacturing of ecology bricks is pet, cement, clay, and water without they need the use cooking a bone. They represent the main difference between conventional breeds and pet breeds. In addition, it is the most significant difference since the why their air is no pollet, the recycled of pet is promoted and as ever is given the, the garbage, the circular economic economy is promoted and the production cost is similar to conventional bricks. Nowadays, there is not a pet bricks manufactory in Bolivia. This is why we really believe this 
is the idea to present a potential market since now environmental problems are a priority not only in Bolivia, but all over the world. It is time to take action at car about a world unique home. I you want more information, please come to me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marco. Exactly three minutes. That's great. Uh, do you have any question, Jerry? Please. Uh, uh, thank you. I have just two questions. What about the technology? Uh, we didn't hear nothing about technology. And the other one, how do you compete with the pet recycling uh, industry? Okay. We are, well, nowadays we don't have a, a plant that recycles plastic. That is really difficult because here, especially in Oruro, there is no environmental cons um, conscience. So people don't think about it. The way we can compete with this idea is that we could start crushing the plastic. That is not a difficult operation. So it is relatively easily. Thank you. Okay, another question? No more questions? Okay. Thank you very much, Petrillos. Thank you. Thank you. Fernando, help us with the next one, please. The next one is Wolf. Hi. I'm here. Can you see my... my... Good. Everything is fine. Go ahead. Go ahead, Alejandro. Perfect. Okay. I'm uh, going to start. Hi, everyone. I'm Alejandro Tran from Wolf. One subscription for all your pet services. To comprehend better our business opportunity, we want to introduce you to Tiago and Chiara. Tiago lives in his apartment with Chiara. Tiago spends a lot of time working and he doesn't have the time to take care properly of Chiara. And knowing that, Tiago subscribed Chiara to Wolf. And now Chiara has multiple benefits like veterinary care on multiple locations and vets, vaccines, the warming, pet grooming, discounts and different services and products as hotels and medicines, food delivery, online medical records, and so on. As Tiago, there are many people in the world having the same issue. 50% of the people have a pet globally, where in Bolivia, there are 3 million people having a pet. The market is so big that glo globally, the pet market size represents $231 billion. In Latin America, it represents $8.29 billion. And in Bolivia, it represents $15 million. As a status, we haven't launched yet, but we have our platform where you can enter whatever you want. Just go to wolf.pro and you can access all the information and service we want to provide. Even though we didn't launch, we have five uh, vets pre-registered to our platform so they can be part of the launch. Also, in the, in the previous months, we have been part of acceleration program by CAINCO, Santa Cruz Innova, and also uh, a Mexican incubator called Rocket U. The business model comprehends five pillars, the subscription model, the e-commerce, the marketplace, the software as a service for bets, and the transactional. In the first stage of launch, we want to start with the subscription and e-commerce, as we told you before. The team behind Wolf comprehended the three co-founders, Alejandro Cuentas as a CFO with experience in investment banking and also operations in AB and BEF, Adrian Valdivia as a CPO with a master's degree in actuarial science and insurance, and also experience in an insurance company called Liberty Seguros. And myself, Alejandro Tran as a CEO with experience in corporate banking, a previous startup called Yana Pena, and a specialization course at Wharton of entrepreneurship at the startups. The three of us share a common value, which is the love for animals. And that's why we also want to help street dogs with food, clothes, and promote adoption campaigns. We're Wolf, the best ally to take care of a pet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alejandro. 
Uh, please, I'll, I'll invite the jury to ask questions. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, I'll take it. Uh, go ahead, uh, Ezra, and then uh, Cecilia, please. Okay, thank you. I don't know if what my turn, but I would like to know the uh, who who is the the uh, expert in in animals because of course it seems that it's going to be the the client. So who's going to attend the the animal needs professionally? Okay, uh, we as we told you before, we have five veterinaries per gesture to wolf. The, the way we work is we have different veterinaries and veterinarians that they're going to have all the services to, to give to the clients. An, an example, they could go to any vet in La Paz, in Cochabamba, in Santa Cruz, or, or, or other place, so they can get all, all the services like vaccines, pet grooming, vet yeah. services, etc. So excuse me, I'm not referring about the service of the animals, but the animal strategy. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, as we told you before, I have a, a, one of the co-founders who has a lot of experience in insurance. So we're, we're doing all the, all the, um, the process to make a, a, a great uh, product. So all, all the people have a good, a good um, product. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, please, please, Cecilia, you have a question? Yes. My question is, how do you make your profit? Do you make your profit from subscriptions or from commissions? Okay, uh, that's a good question. Uh, as I told you before, uh, our business model comprehends five uh, different pillars. The subscription model is gonna be uh, from a share price for every subscription we get. The e-commerce is because we're gonna sell food to, to our clients. And the other ones are gonna be for the vets because we, we're gonna try to have our allies are, are gonna be vets. And for any, uh, any sale, we're gonna have a transaction. So it's, it's a different business model for each uh, business model, as I, as I told you, yeah. Okay, well, we have one more minute. If, if somebody, Jerry, has any other question. The market size, please. Sure. Uh, as I told you, uh, globally, the market size is really big for pet market. It's 231 billion. And in Bolivia, we extracted $15 million, which is the number we we uh, we subtracted for for Bolivian Institute of Commerce, and is from 2018 for all the imports and services of pets. But it's increasing rapidly because there's a uh, a lot of people going to be pet parenting, so it's a, a really big market. That will be your market. You have, you don't have competi competitors. You don't have any other uh, company that. Uh, shares the market that's that the whole market for you um no we have a, uh, we have competitors like the veterinarians that are not going to be part of wolf there's people selling also stuff uh, on their own but we want to help them also with the um eco the marketplace as, as, as i told you before where they can also offer their products in our web platform okay thank you very much thank you Thank you. Um, Please, no, Fernando, we have, uh, we have competitors help us like... for the next one. Okay, we have finished the idea category. So let's move on to the early stage startups. The first one is Accept Go. Thank you. Let me share the screen. Ready whenever you say. Go ahead, uh, Jonathan, your time. We are transforming how Bolivians apply to internships, jobs, and international scholarships. ASEPGO is a culturally attuned career development so program and software. Our milestones range from Stanford Rebuild Honor List among 5,300 teams worldwide to a monthly revenue of 1500 with a manual prototype. The purpose of our dream is to elevate your career and show your full potential. This purpose is so strong that has engaged UX talents, engineers, and Oxford MBA developers and video producers and even economists. The size of the problem, 1.8 million Latin Americans 
graduate each year without the proper training for the global workforce. The career mismatch in Latin America has an economic impact of $1.5 billion. And our yearly revenue potential is of $16 million in Latin America. Who's our customers? They are talented and, motivation, and motivated professionals that have big dreams, they are achievers, and they want to do more. They don't know how to gain early experience, how to apply for jobs and scholarships. They are left alone to face the monster of the lack of experience in a tight job market in Latin America. Only 1% of Latin Americans are able to reach their full potentials with coaches training and in artificial intelligence as the Ivy Leagues provide. What's happening in the world? Career service platforms and career centers in top universities train their students with artificial intelligence, benchmarking severity, targeted guidance, and creates a huge advantage. Let's see an example. This platform is so committed to help students that they can track the body language, the speech, the, how you move your eyes and, and everything to give you the best opportunities in your interviews. And what's university networks and career centers provide something extremely important in the developer world. Many coaches, many psychologists that give is key ingredients. Confidence. And how we differentiate from the world because we provide a culturally attuning confidence booster solution in less than 20 minutes every day. Let's see how it works. After five minutes, you start monetizing understanding your homework. Next, you do your daily homework and see a smart prompts and get rewarded with live feedback. By doing this, you improve in small chunks. Without noticing, you get laser focus CV screen, clarity on career pathways, and start networking in your different career pathways. Why should we care? Understand the Thank job you, Jonathan. should be a right. Thank you, Jonathan. You have three minutes already used. Thanks. Any questions from the jury? In English, please. I didn't understand what are you selling. Okay. Sorry. We provide courses and a software to help young Latin American students to develop the skills and employability to compete in the same level as a graduate in, a, in an Ivy League. That's CVs, helping with CV, LinkedIn, and also networking and the key ingredient is confidence in bolivia like the two reasons why people don't get good jobs the first is lack of experience we help them how to develop early experience whenever they are studying and the second one is mm. self-confidence so seeing stories in videos and other other stuff helps students to be, go farther and keep moving to their dreams thank you uh, you have one minute and 30 seconds. Please uh, keep your questions and your answers really short so you have time to get an approach from everybody. Any other question? Okay, thank you very much, Jonathan. I Thanks have a, lot. a question. Ah, okay, uh, sorry. Go ahead, yes. Cecilia. Um, my question is the, the, the support that you are giving and the advice that you are giving to new graduates, do you provide it? Does your team provide it or do you work with professionals from universities? Uh, our team provided, we have created many examples in videos and you connect to the platform, you get live feedback, uh, especially I was working like many years in the career services helping me in my during my MBA. And also we have close relationships uh, with Tubeca Bolivia where I have made more than 200 scholarship awarded Bolivians that have faced these challenges. <laughs> we still have time. Do we yeah, still we have, have time? Uh, yeah, uh, twenty-five seconds. You're, you're, ahead. You are in the early in the early stage right now. You already validated your product. 
your service. Yes, we already sell nine batches. Uh, next month, we're is, we're proving in different countries. Uh, we're making an alliance with a uh, Hotmart, so we're gonna test how the product goes outside Bolivia. But we already we're getting close to a hundred uh, customers paying customers. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Jonathan. Six minutes. Uh, go ahead, Fernando. Next one. Uh, the next one is Blink. Good night, jury members. Please let me share my screen. Okay, thank you for your time for having us here. Okay, your time, go ahead. Okay, we are Blink, a uh, disruptive fintech startup focused on people that still uses cash. In Bolivia, there are only 27 ATMs for every 100,000 people, and they are only accessible to the most privileged. Cuando no tengo plata, es muy difícil porque no hay cajero cerca. El cajero más cercano me queda como a 30 cuadras. Naya japa que otra cajero saraña haya o nada de Yo ni cuenta tengo en el banco porque no hay cajeros por mi casa. In a region where the use of cash grew during the pandemic, a game-changing solution was absolutely necessary. Introducing Blink, an application that converts more than 70,000 taxis into the first mobile ATM network in the world. You have the need for cash, they have the money in their cars. In a país de 11 million habitants and 7 million smartphones, una innovación como esta podría cambiar la vida de muchas personas a través de la inclusión financiera masiva. You enter the amount you need and a nearby driver with enough funds accepts the order and takes it wherever you are. Then a code is generated so that the driver can withdraw the money delivered plus a small commission at any ATM without the need of a card turning the application into an investment system with immediate return for the driver. This innovation increased the number of ATMs from 2,970 to 6,970 on the first day of launch. A 135% growth in just one day. We democratize access to money, but more importantly, to hope. Blink. Okay, our potential addressable market is anyone in the world, banked or unbanked, that uses cash as a primary model. But our total addressable market is the $1.8 billion withdrawn in ATMs in the six largest countries in Latin America, a completely unattended segment. The service, the serviceable available market is $540 million from which we believe we can win 10% of market share since we are planning to work with United Nations uh, to culturize taxi drivers and other stakeholders in the future. Uber owns no taxis, Airbnb owns no hotels, Blink owns no ATMs. We strongly believe we are the missing link between traditional banking and the digital one. Thank you very much. Uh, the same question, uh, you already validated this, you're growing right now. Uh, what do you think about the, the issue that uh, money, the, 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 the money is going to disappear and we are going to digitalize everything? Uh, yes, uh, uh, um, well, people is digitalizing, right? Uh, but right now in Latin America, Latin America is the, the only region where the use of cash grew during the pandemic and talking to uh, many experts, uh, banking experts, uh, they tell us this is going to last at least what, the next 10 years. We have this product as a, a transitory product and uh, we are creating another verticals. Uh, what we are doing is to 
involve people with an offline need, the cash, with an online solution, the application. Something that China already did, by the way. Good to know. We are with this since 2019, you know, so. Another question? Yes. There's QR system platforms. There is another client of platforms, Tigo Money, etc. How do you convince me that it's safe? Because every person that wants to use uh, the application needs to uh, connect uh, the application with their money, uh, their account, bank accounts. So you you transfer the money through a chat. It's very easy, um, and and that's all. It's it's very secure. Uh, uh, if may permit uh, Henry to complement uh, the, the answer. In this case, we are a hub to integrate the financial services with companies and the people. All the transactions have the security of the financial services of the banks in Bolivia. That is our, our strategy to control the security, in this case, for the transaction. If for the service, for the people, the, the interaction with the application the permit have the information that is important for for the for the person and in this case for the bank did you already have the government permit to do this you are in the early stage you already have the permits uh, yes we are we are we are working together with a with a bank in uh, in bolivia the our strategy is to make a uh, associations with the banks they already have the 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 license and the authorization of the government we are uh, uh, the ones that are uh, with the user uh, experience and all the uh, facilities uh, for the users so the backup for us is the uh, our associated banks thank you very much that uh, your time is up six minutes thank, thank you, you. remember thank, thank you. you thank you very much fernando please Okay, the next is Eagle Eye. Hello. Yes. Can you see my okay. screen? Yeah, everything's fine. Go ahead, uh, Erica. Your time is gone. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. I am Erika Lopez, founder and CEO of Eagle Eye Bolivia. We all can fly, we just need to get the right set of wings. If we think about all the improvements modern technology has brought to our lives over the past decade, social media, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, and all the multifunctional devices that have become part of our day-to-day -day lives, like cell phones, iPads, smartwatches, fit strappers, electric cars, the list of innovation is so long. If the challenge of starting your own business wouldn't already be big enough, think about implementing modern technology that on one side could potentially improve your results and workflow, but on the other side brings more challenges. Like you have to keep up with new technology. You have to choose the right set of hardware and software tools, the cost and not less important, identifying and attracting the right talent. In Eagle Eye Bolivia, we know this firsthand because we have been there as a startup that implements drone technology for consulting services in engineering and construction. We must face all these challenges every day. And I am not going to go into detail with drone government regulations as it can get really scary. Let's talk about drone technology, since this is something that can be easily misunderstood. While there are numerous drone applications, not all drones are created equal. There are many types of modern, commercial, and military drones. In fact, there are over 100 companies that manufacture drones and drone accessories today. DJI, Pirate, and Unique being the most popular, yet not the only ones. Furthermore, this technology is innovational, and due to the main to the many possible applications, its implementation, it's not only a problem for new startups, but for anyone that wants to take advantage of its benefits, even grown established businesses. The global commercial drone market size is expected to expand at a compound annual growth rate of 57.5% from 2021 to 2027. 
Eagle Eye Bolivia is currently working on a, on a web-based platform that will allow anyone interested in this technology access to relevant information for their area of application. And if you become a member, we will make sure you don't have to start from scratch exploring the infinite world of drone technology so you can focus on your core business. Eagle Eye Bolivia is part of Drone Lab Bolivia, and we have recently joined the Flying Labs Network, where we can directly connect with teams for from 32 countries around the globe. Our executive team consists of myself, Julio Villegas as COO, Ricardo Balcazar as CFO, Ivan Ortiz as CTO, Karen Monterrey as CMO, Daniel Zurita as CIO, and Carla Aguirre as CDO. So yes, you can also fly. And we want to make sure your startup or grown established business has the right set of weights so you can fly higher. Thank you. Thank you, Erika. Uh, please, the juries, any question? Yes, hello. Uh, I would like to know about your uh, unique proposal. How are you going to the, make the difference? Um, the, the uniqueness of our service gives us a competitive advantage. Um, as a result, we are certain that we, we don't really have eminent competition. Thank you. You mean you don't have competition in Bolivia or you don't have competition in the world? No, we don't have competition in the world. Nobody, uh, we have, we do, do not believe, we haven't seen anybody that would take you step by step through implementing drone technology in any of um, the stages of your business. Since we also, we, we're like giving this um, very, very uh, personalized service so it involves uh, also government regulations and to pick up the right drone it's it's really a big 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 um, challenge to do all this stuff by yourself did you perform a, a benchmark no okay. Any other question? Well, we have the, we have one more minute. Okay, then okay. How, how do you, how did you calculate your, your, your market niche? Not the market size, your market niche. How did you calculate your market niche? As a startup that uh, implements drone technology in, in their services, we, ha we know firsthand everything that involves implementing this technology, since the cost of entry to the world of drone tech is currently very, very high, uh, not only financial, but also human capital and time investment. But what's the, what's the size of the, your market niche? Well, uh, the global commercial drone market size is expected to expand at a compound annual growth rate of 57.5 Five percent from 2021 to 2027. Okay, uh, six minutes are gone. Thank you very much, Erika. Thanks a lot for the juries. Fernando, please. Okay, the next is Moby. Thank you, thank you, Fernando. I present my friends. Go ahead, please. Okay. Okay. Start. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, yeah. Hello, every yeah. hello everyone. My name is Ariel Rebollo. I am CEO and co-founder. And Angie Camacho is the Government Affairs and Business Development. Uh, okay. Mobi is the solution for four problems: the pollution. Uh, system of transport in all Latin America, uh, the economic limitations for the transport, and the poor quality of life in, in, in Latin America for the transport. Uh, what is Movi? Movi is an energy startup 
focusing the transport uh, of sharing mobility, uh, like a, a lime, like a beard. But Mobi have two differences. The first difference is all vehicles Mobi is manufacturing in-house. And the second difference is the energy. Mobi generate all energy with the solar panels and uh, like, like the screen is uh, energy uh, for the move the vehicles and uh, no use anyone more than solar uh, sun uh, and uh, this 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 is the second uh, month of service and have 3.5 thousand of dollars and 5,000 of rides uh, in the pilot pilot stage with only 50 vehicles uh, for the testing and have a uh, uh, insurance uh, over insurance for the users for all problems and uh, situation about the security. Uh, have a mobus is the integrated for the micro mobility and the massive transport in one in one app. Uh, so, what is the market opportunity in the B two C model in the sharing model uh, uh, system? Have a, a, a great projection, but the B two B model for selling vehicles for the sharing mobility companies is most interesting. So right now have three, four, three strengths. One is the industry 4.0 in Santa Cruz, the lithium lamp and a great R&D department. And of course, the over technology for scale. Uh, this is the, the, the roadmap, uh, the first quarter pilot to launch, uh, launch the pilot stage. This, Right now, the focus is the Lithium Lab uh, for our product, principal product, Mo Mobat. And the third is, uh, quart is the scale stage, launch uh, 500 vehicles in the, in, the, in the market of Santa Cruz. And the last quarter of this year is the smart factory open house uh, for the building and uh, 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 produce many, many vehicles for all, uh, all, all the expansion of the of the world. So the final of this is Mobi City. Mobi City is the final project of this this uh, uh, entrepreneur. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot, Ariel. Uh, please, uh, the jury, go ahead. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ariel. Uh, how do you plan to deal with, or how do you, are you dealing with the Robis? Robis. Sorry, robberies. Sorry, robberies. Okay, okay. Delinquents have have a great insurance. Uh, the mobile cars uh, is uh, uh, for, for these problems. Uh, uh, maybe a vandalism or or, or or many situations. Uh, the mobile cars have ten percent of all uh, all 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 monitoring uh, of the service. But I, I, I have a solution for this, 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 this problem with the movie cars. If nobody else has a question, I have another question. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, as I mentioned before, I've been there in Santa Cruz for a few times. Uh, and uh, I think you have a, a, a real problem uh, with the traffic. Yes. Right now, right now, will you use a bicycle under the tra traffic of, of Santa Cruz? Will you? Do you have to move a, a, a population, a culture, to solve that problem? How many bicycles are, are selling your you are selling right now, or um, any other kind of bike uh, or, or uh, vehicle vehicle right now? Oh. Okay, right now Santa Cruz have a, a, not have a problem of, of, of uh, transit, no. Uh, so uh, my, 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 my principal problem is the infrastructure uh, for, the, for the users, but I don't, don't, don't sell bicycles, I only, only have the service. But the next step with a, a factoring uh, uh, finish, I sell bikes for other sharing companies not the final user uh, only for b2b business so who's going to sell the bicycles and the or any other kind of, of uh, transport that is not car yes yes exactly my 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 vehicles is uh, 
it's very expensive for the technology and so the, the user final user don't pay for this but the companies need uh, vehicles with uh, a telematic and uh, other systems with uh, sharing mo uh, mobility need excuse me maybe can i help um in the terms of infrastructure we are tr dealing with the municipality to build a, a bad bike so we are focusing also on have the strict line for this kind of uh, service and share mobility. okay thank you very much your time is up thanks a lot sorry thank you thank you thank you very much thank you okay the next a startup is a Scout Champs. Uh, you can see my screen? Uh, Almost. No. It's getting there. No yet. Not yet. Yeah. No, no, yeah. Yes. Can we just one minute? You ready? Yeah. Go ahead. So, hi everyone. I'm Gary Eruas. I'm CCO of Scout Champs, and we are connecting high performance athletes with scouts of teams, universities, and sponsors all over the world. We see every day on the news that millions of, of athletes miss out opportunities due to no exposure, limited network of contacts, lack of information about these opportunities, and lack of resources. That's why we develop a platform that generates opportunities for a sports contract and scholarships for players and jobs for uh, scouts where the players or athletes can show their uh, sports career, their achievement and the scouts their experience. We also count with a specialized search engine by sport position that helps the user to find that person that will take them to the next level. Being part of Scout Champs is very simple. You just sign up from anywhere in the world in scoutchamps.com. You create your profile, upload your achievements, photos, videos, and sports career, and then you show your talent to the world. Our business model is based on three principal pillars. Premium subscription, as an scout or as an athlete, you can sign up free, but if you're an athlete, if you want to take it to the next level, you can pay a subscription from 7 99 per month. Uh, we also come with university scholarship services and advertising banners for the sponsors that want to show their brand uh, all over the platform. Some of the scouts that are present in our platform go from uh, uh, first division soccer clubs like Club Atlético San Lorenzo Almagro or Club Atlético Nacional Potosí or Lumen, or like uh, swimming clubs like Club Medri that has one of the Olympic representatives of Bolivia right now. And we contact, we have contact with more than 600 universities universities around the world. We have right now a community of more than 800 users uh, divided in athletes and scouts. All of this done organically. And the best example is our success stories of some of our athletes, like, like Leslie Day and Ariadna, who got scholarship offers from universities in the US, or Christian Lerdillo, who signed up a contract uh, with a, a manager, and he's now on a first division soccer club or Juan Carlos and Juan Diego, who with 14 and 16 years old, they already have sponsorship contracts and they got it thanks to Scout Champs. All of this work is possible thanks to our team. Andre Fini, our CEO, and Carlos Galvez, who is our contact in Scout in US, Diego, who is our CTO, and me, who, who is in the commercial area. Uh, we believe that we're changing lives of the young athletes through Scout Champs, and we invite you to be part of the largest sports community joining now and scoutchamps.com. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Gary. Uh, the jury, any questions? Your time is for you. Thank you. I would like to ask about the money making process, please. Yeah, we have a business model based on subscriptions. We already have more than 800 users, which of them are 20 paying users of subscription. And we also sell the university scholarships uh, services where we connect is, uh, athletes who are, who are around 14 to 18 years old to universities around the world. Thank you. Any other question? 
doubt? Okay, if there are no any other questions, thank you very much. We go to the next one. Okay, thank you, René. Um, we have finished the second category uh, with the scout champs, and the next is the growth category. Uh, let's start with the talks. Mm. Hey everyone, can you see my screen? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Hold on a second, please. Hi everyone, I am Gabriela Moreira. I am the CEO and founder of Detox Bolivia. Let's face it, everyone wants to be fit and healthy nowadays, but this is very hard. But why? If the common causes uh, for obesity and overweight are very common and very treatable if you have the right tools. Right now we have a um, global obesity epidemic and uh, that, that became very evident with the COVID-19 since being obese or having overweight problems is a risk factor if you all have COVID-19. The efforts around the world about this problem are uh, almost 100% focused in nutrition. You can see national food strategies around the world. You can see uh, sugar taxes, salt taxes around the world and plant-based solutions in order to have other uh, sources of protein. So let me introduce you Detox. We sell and we produce and distribute uh, natural snacks and supplements adaptable to your needs. Uh, the, main, um, the main thing about our product is that we are sugar-free, we are gluten-free, we are dairy-free, and um, the uh, amount of uh, calorie, uh, uh, calorie is very low, but you have a high uh, nutritional level. We have uh, a variety of around 20 products. Uh, here you can see some of them. You have gummies with, which are zero uh, sugar, with a guy, ginger, matcha. We have bites, we have uh, capsules, uh, which are 100% natural without preservatives. We have other products too. We have an infusion, we have aloe shot without sugar, and we have our handcrafted tea blends. And we focus mainly in people um, with, um, that are seeking for health and wellness. And uh, we sell our products directly from our platform and uh, through so social media, we work with influencers too. And we are interested in working with coffee shops and restaurants. We work with some retail stores right now. We work with personal trainers uh, that recommend our products and they have a, a commission for that. Also with nutrition, it's the same. We work with online shops too in La Paz and we are um, we just signed with uh, Pedidos Ya. So we are working uh, from August with Pedidos Ya. Uh, Pedidos Ya is part of the one of the largest uh, companies of uh, distribution. Uh, we expect to grow nationwide uh, with presence in retail stores in order to be able to invest in technology uh, for the production of raw foods and plant-based protein alternatives to consolidate our brand in Bolivia and develop uh, expert quality products. Thank you very much. Sorry, uh, I was telling that three minutes, that was good. Thank you, Gabriela. Uh, the jury, please, any question? I do have a question, but I don't want to be uh, uh, the one who asked right now. Okay. Is there any uh, other one? Uh, I Cecilia, can make the question. Cecilia, uh, I think uh, your your microphone. You have the mute. Okay. Um, my question is, do you have contracts with local providers? How do you assure yourself that you will have all of the raw ingredients or the ingredients that you need to produce your products were, were um, year, year round? We uh, work with local farmers. We also produce some of our uh, uh, raw uh, products. We have uh, plantations for tea blends. 
and uh, the other products that we need um, for uh, manufacturing our products, we will work with local farmers and other parties. Are your products um, organic? Yes, they're organic, but we do not have the certification of organic yet. That is something that we will need to export, right? Another question? Thank you. Well, Gabriela, I, I did yeah. enter to internet and I found detox brand wherever in the, I mean, a lot of brands with the name. Do you have yes. an issue with the name? Do you have, do you have a registration for your the, the brand? You're going to have a, you're in the growth stage. You're going to have a problem with the, the brand. Well, we have a, a registered Detox Bolivia, but only in Bolivia, not, okay. as, a, not as a brand, but a, as an enterprise. Okay. Okay, the full name, Detox Bolivia, that is a brand. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Uh, okay. Yes, I will. I will make a quick question. Bye. Bye. Uh, are you using uh, Bolivian exclusive products, or something that is only produced in Bolivia? We're working right now in uh, products um, with Andean uh, ingredients. That is our main goal because we want to export our products, and we know that we need to use Bolivian ingredients for that but we need to produce them with high quality uh, oh. products and we need technology and we need some software to produce them in the quality that we want to produce them. We're working on them right now. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank Fernando, you. thank you, Gabriela. Thank you. Uh, the next, uh, is Echo T Remedies? Okay, your time is on for now. Go ahead, Ingrid. Did you know that the tea bags you consume every day, either in the morning or breakfast, or uh, your microphone is mute, Ingrid? Okay. Uh, again, please. Go ahead, go ahead. Did you know that the tea bags you consume every day, either in the morning for breakfast or in the afternoon for a snack, release about 3.2 trillion nanoplastics? And did you know that this nanoplastic is a material that it's made up of different types of plastics, such as bisphenol, which can be dangerous to, your, to our health and can diseases such as different types of cancer. Since this product is a demand thanks to the current COVID-19, in addition to leading the highest unemployment rate histories with a, a number of 11.6% in 2020 and 7.6% in 2021. In addition, uh, another uh, but uh, is that is polluting the environment. That's why uh, we can present our product that's Eco Tea. Eco Tea is a product that is 100 organic. This product is made from the planting and harvesting of fruits, vegetables, and medicinal plants of the highlands, the Andean region. In addition, it can cure different types of illness such as anemia, arthritis, weakness, and others. With this product, we solve the SDG number 3, 13, and 8. Make herbal teas. You can see there our products. We have seven types of products for our consumers. Uh, with the consumption of this product, we have three important things. 
time and cost is the first, and the second is the environment. The third is uh, your health, which is the most important thing because you take care of it in a natural way. And we have the plus and this employment uh, generations. Ecotour Remedies comes in different presentations infusions with biodegradable filters, drinks and blends of naturals and organic teas uh, according to the needs of the person and the type of paint. We develop self-sustainable gardens as a response to the possible shortage of food and natural medicines due to COVID-19 pandemic. Ecotea has future projects to expand the production line into cosmetic and nutritional products. And we already have our second greenhouse. We currently have two partners that are uh, Eco, uh, Huerto Singabi and Eco Cajas. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram uh, as Equity Remedies, and we are Equity Remedies team. Ingrid, and sorry, uh, your time is gone. Oh, you okay. have more than three minutes. Sorry, just to to have in the record, uh, who was the first person that uh, gave the pitch? The name, if it's uh, uh, is, with you there, is our our CEO is Natalie Cavana, and then uh, me, Ingrid Monroy. Okay, is is Natalie with you? Yes, is is here, but your his her microphone is uh, with a problem. Hello. Okay, thank you very much. Any question? Yes. How do you fight in this big uh, tea market around the world? There's many of these kind of products. One of our benefit to, uh, to, to fight in this big market is that our product is made of a cotton bag. It's not made of a bisphenol bag. That's why our product has so many benefits to health and to, uh, to fight in this big market. For now, we are only the unique uh, ent uh, entrepreneur that that has this product with cotton bags. We have one more minute. You have any other question? I have a question. Um, you are not the only product that offers the cotton bags, and the cotton bag is actually uh, something that makes it friendlier with the environment. Uh, what type of medical um, ba uh, backup do you have to claim that you can cure diseases? Okay, uh, with our products, we are um, combating anemia. We are combating, uh, preventing cancer and different types of cancer and uh, leukemia, of course, that's another type of cancer we are preventing. But my question is, do you have some type of backup from the medical society that will claim that this is true? Yeah, yes. We're using uh, ancestral knowledge. That's um, the origin of this ancestral knowledge is the Andean region of Bolivia. That's why we are having a lot of people here that's helping us to uh, make our product uh, good for health. Who's clinically certifying this for you? Yes, uh, not also. We, we, we didn't use um, just uh, ancestral knowledge. We use some articles that are scientific that help us to develop our products. Also in our team, we have an uh, engineer that is specialized in food and health. Okay, and thank you very much. Improved. Sorry. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Fernando, who is coming next? Okay, uh, the next startup is uh, Luso Mo. Yeah. 
Hi, everybody. I am Mariana Loaiza, the CEO of Luso Mall, an online store made to order. Luso Mall is the first online store made to order in Bolivia with a win win model. We started one year ago with $150 investment in samples, free tools to make the catalog catalog and all the design, an association with the best partners in production and, as, and a small sales team, most friends and family. The three principal values of, the, of, of this business model that we created is in, this, in this year are the synergy with the production partners and the collaborative team, the one line for sales who makes the difference with a customer service experience, and the personal, personalist outfits, the customer can choose the size, the color, and the fabric for him, his family, and for his, and for his pet. At this time, we have four brands that are 100% made in Bolivia inside the platform. Our team is formed by the following areas like marketing, production, sales force, distribution, administrative, and system. We have more than 100 direct and indirect workers. Our business model is confirmed by a 70% that is outsourced. The social impact of this model can provide incomes to housewife, single moms, unemployed people, young people, and retired people. This is one of our main goals. Now, are we going to talk about our customers? Up to date, we have more than 3,500 clients. Our business model generates happiness, bonds, emotions, and satisfaction to our, to our customers. At the moment, we can say that we have a loyal community named Luso Lover. So far, we have prove that our business model works and generates sales, reboy and incomes to all people involved in our team. Our next step is our vision. And then one next step and our vision is to be an automated platform made to order with marketing support, sales support and customer service for the people, for entrepreneurs, craftsmen, women, and anybody who has a quality product uh, which can fit in this best business model with this logistic, with a strike, a strict uh, quality standards, timing production, 0% waste, continuous innovation, and efficient process. Thank you very much, uh, Mariana. Your time is up. Thank you. Please, Jury, any questions, comments? Please go ahead. Yes, hello. Um, I would like to ask uh, if you have inventory or how do you attend the, the, the demand? And also, how do you know what to produce in order the sizes, colors, designs? So there are two questions in one thing. Uh, we, uh, well, our model is uh, the client uh, choose the color, the size, and the model. We already have uh, more than 30 models, um, and the client, and, and we, uh, in, in the catalog, uh, we, we um, show the colors, uh, the fabric, the size, and and the customer cho uh, choose which one uh, uh, he likes, and and uh, the uh, our, our sales sales force uh, takes uh, the order. And the time to produce? Uh, one week. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
Who will be your main competitor and what will be your main advantage? Uh, we, we, we have a, a lot of follow -up comp competitors and um, we uh, um, and, and we stand uh, for our model business. No? Uh, we have a great team. Uh, uh, a very big, uh, not very big, uh, big sales force, and we generate um, customer experience. And the competition that right now is follow us uh, don't have uh, this this team, and and the quality and this business model. So your main advantage is that you are, you are the producer. Uh, yes, we are the producer and the customer experience. So how you are going to compete against, for example, Amazon or Alibaba or uh, Shopify or any other uh, platform like because this? Because we, we made to order. Uh, we can, um, the customer can um, uh, make another order, a big, big size and for his pet it, it, it's very personalized so okay uh, thank you very much it. your time is gone thank you thank you mariana thank thanks you, a lot thank you thank you very much thank you okay the next startup is mamut uh, let's hear from him thank you i am the screams hi i'm manuel laredo I am the CEO founder of Mamut. Mamut is a company that is producing building materials for sustainable cities. Right now, our sales in Latin America is throwing away $26 billion of dollars every year. And these are the same cities that have problems in infrastructure, that have problems in, in, in jobs, that have problems in quality of life. These are cities that need hope. This is the cities that need productivity. It's for this reason that right now Mahmoud sees this garbage as money, using the garbage to produce sustainable materials to improve the quality of life of the people. Uh, we have, right now, we use the recycling materials of rubber, plastic, and tetrapack to produce these materials, to produce these building materials that are building sustainable cities right now. Right now, we have 14 products in the market and we invest in a new technologic center to develop 20 more products in the next five years. And with this project, we made more than 1,000 projects in three countries, Bolivia, Paraguay, and Panama. We sell the last year $1.8 million with a bid at 35% and with a profit of a half a million of dollars. And also, we recycle 2 million of kilograms for the garbage to produce these materials. That is, and we capture CO2 equivalent, that is equivalent of more or less 82,500 uh, uh, trees. Uh, but we are growing. We, uh, we want to go to Paraguay in 2021. We are uh, beginning our operation in 2002 in Uruguay. And we believe that we have 100 million of potential market in these three countries. Uh, this is the first step to be the first Bolivian transnational of impact. We are a corp certificate, and right now we invest three million in dollars in, in Bolivia, and we are investing right now one million in Paraguay, and we hope invest one million in the next 2022 in Uruguay. For these things, we raise one million of dollars for the traditional bank in Bolivia with average rate of 2.5 percent. But our product is not our innovation. We are not a recycling company. We are a circular economy company. Why? Because we are designing the infrastructure. For example, the infrastructure that need blink or need mobile. We are producing using solar panels. We uh, use electric cars to sell our products. We promote the consumer resp uh, responsible consumption and all these things connected with the recyclers of the city. Mamut, don't pick up the garbage. We buy this garbage to this a lot of a lot of people that are working with us 
uh, creating this value for the cities. And our innovation is our business model. And uh, this business model was awarded several times in Bolivia, uh, Costa Rica, Ecuador, and recently with a partner with the uh, business, model, uh, business school of uh, Tecnologico Monterrey, we won uh, a prize in USA, I'm to flourish, and we won a, a Abu Dhabi Sustainable Week for this job to accomplish the uh, sustainable development goals of, of nation nation. Thank we you, Manuel. That uh, your, time, your time is up. Thank you so much. Thank you. No, thank you. Any, any question, please? Yes, thank you. I have a question. What about your feed stocks? Uh, do you have uh, the feed stocks for, to increase your, your production from Bolivia? Or you need to yes. Start? Yes, this is a very important thing. We work with the I call this natural circular economy. This is important thing because when you talk with the people in the other countries, they see the other form that we pick up our garbage. Right now, as we contact, have a very strong model that work with recyclers. And we want to, uh, well, we are working with these people to pick up this garbage and buy these products. I know, and this is a very important thing, our business model has the ability to, to uh, multiply, multiply in this type of cities, three million of persons in different parts in Latin America and Africa. And this is the difference what the model of USA or Korea that don't work in, in the quantity of garbage that we have. Uh, I entered your uh, web page. You have a lot of uh, products, baldosas, moquetas, pavimento, ecoparques. You have a lot of products. I think the problem will be growth for you. How are you going to plan to grow, uh, uh, to plan your growth? What will be your main advantage in that, in this stage? This is very company. Yeah, this has been very important thing. We introduced a new product in a new market that is Bolivia. We have the 90% of the market right now in Bolivia, and we want to have the same market in Paraguay and Uruguay. We have a very strong development center, and we invest $200,000 to develop this high tech laboratory, and we are creating new materials. New materials, and this is important, new materials that connect with the cities. And this is the difference for us to the product to China we can do impact in our cities in Latin America. And right now, we, uh, we register our brands in Paraguay and Uruguay and Bolivia. And this is important. If we want to grow, we want to be in other parts of the world. We are a professional Bolivian that see uh, the world as a market, but we are using this market to make the change. Thank you very As much. To the the six minutes China, are gone. We can Thank do you. impact. Thank you so much in Latin America. Mm -hmm. And right now we uh, Fernando we register our brand I think in Paraguay we have and one Uruguay more. and Bolivia. And this is important. Uh, yes, the if last we want one. Grow, we want to be in other parts of the world. The we are one professional Bolivians is, that see uh, uh, the world as a market, gerente. but we are using this market to make the change. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much. The six minutes are okay. Sorry. Uh, it's okay. Share my screen here. Can you see my presentation? Yes. Great. So let's start. My name is Omaira and I'm co-founder of Tujerente. When we ask our clients, how much have you sold this month? They don't know. Most SMEs don't have their financial information at hand. Some of them don't have this information anywhere. This is a huge problem. 80% of SMEs do not survive the first three years due to bad financial management. It represents 22 million SMEs closing each year and more, more than 90 million people losing their jobs. We understand the problem because we live it firsthand. We used to log our data in Excel and, and books. And instead of going, we were in an eternal struggle to survive. We decided to create a solution that allows SMEs 
to integrate their financial information in one platform with the standardized information and simple intuitive reports. We created a business data platform that is called Tu Gerente, where SMEs can manage their finances. We aim to revolutionize financial data management and create greater financial inclusion to SMEs in LATAM. How? By centralizing their finances in one place. Purchases, expenses, sales, inventory, all of it locked in an, in an standardized way and connected with external solutions. We, um, we are growing at a rapid pace. We have uh, more than 500 SMEs customers in Bolivia and Peru. Each month, our clients make more than 400K uh, transactions and analyze more than 70,000 reports, helping them to make better decisions. This creates a huge impact. Four out of five of our clients double their revenue during the first year of using Tuherente. We have competitors in each country. Nevertheless, uh, competition is fragmented and there isn't um, a clear dominance. In fact, our competitors are mainly focused on, on industries like accountant or HR. Our vision is different. We are focused on being the information harbor of SMEs in LATAM, a platform in which information is centralized and registered, integrated with other external tools. We are a SaaS company. Our business model is based on subscriptions. Our funding team is completely focused on working on Tujerente's growth. We have a lot of uh, experience in key industries, such as um, business development, finance, and sales. We have achieved a lot of uh, milestones together, and now we invite you to join us in the transformation for SME's financial inclusion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pejuri, please. Any question? Yes. Uh, how, how do you manage the different legislation in the different countries? Uh, hello, my name is Javier. I'm the, the CFO. Um, the main difference in legislation is based on accounting-based uh, software. Our main core is the finances. Um, and what we have done uh, for uh, our expansion, for example, is to integrate uh, our solution with an invo invoicing platform. And we're working on the scalability for the accounting part. However, uh, we have integrated ourselves with different accounting platforms in, in different areas, including Bolivia. So if you compare, for example, a software uh, platform with, uh, with our solution, it can work together or uh, smaller companies can use our software module as well. So the, the main differences in, in legislations are based on integrations with uh, invoicing particularly. Thank you. Any other question? Okay, there's no other question. Uh, thank you, thank you very much uh, to Herente. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, Fernando, I think we went over the 15 startups. Uh, yes, we are sir. almost on time. We are almost on time. It's nine o'clock. And uh, now, uh, if you don't have any co other comment, let me let me introduce somebody here. And also, uh, I'm going to ask you, Fernando, if we can, if you can invite us to go to another area or another uh, uh, room. It, all the juries and myself, and I want to introduce uh,
Eh, sí, yes, yes. <ríe> Eh, hasta antes de aplicar ya habíamos decidido que nosotros íbamos a tener un cambio de negocio, un pivoting, lo que le llaman, ¿no? Eh, toda esta participación en el IWC eh, lo presentamos con la atracción de mascotas, y bueno, en sí no lo habíamos todavía presentado con el nombre en Biospet, pero lo único que hicimos fue hablar de todo lo que era el mundo de mascotas, ¿no? En ese entonces éramos el único e-commerce que vendía productos de mascotas, eh, y bueno, hoy en día ya tenemos competencia, obviamente, pero sí somos los líderes en Bolivia en todo lo que es venta de alimentos de mascotas en el lado online, y bueno, físico hoy en día ya estamos muy fuertes, y eso que solo estamos en Santa Cruz. El 2019, bueno, participamos, eh, ganamos las finales en la ronda que están aquí, y en ese instante eran 170 participantes, bueno, los 170 campeones, solo pasaba uno por país, eh, y ahí entramos a la fase 2, a la fase 2, donde es una aceleradora, una aceleradora que me acuerdo que duró más o menos unas seis semanas. Se puede decir que tuvimos un poco de suerte que nosotros veníamos de un proceso de aceleración, entonces eh, tener toda la información fue mucho más fácil para nosotros, pero sin duda la tarea que nos daban era muy compleja, nos quitó mucho tiempo y, y la verdad que aquí eh, le puedo dar un consejo para... Creo que hay uno o dos finalistas que entren en esta etapa, que rájense, eh, pónganle todo, todas las ganas que tengan, porque la verdad que, que toma mucho tiempo y hacerla las cosas al último minuto no, no, es, es, es muy difícil, porque mal que mal, en nuestro momento tenías que mostrar todos los resultados, eh, tenías que mostrar todos los avances que hacías, todo, tenías que mostrar todo, ¿no? tenías que tener reuniones con mentores, y en sí nosotros tuvimos muy buena relación con los mentores que obviamente ahí ayudaba y sin duda todas las métricas que, que estábamos poniendo y decíamos que queríamos lograr, pudimos lograrlas en su momento dado y eso nos ayudó a ser uno de los 100 finalistas, nos escogieron eh, ser uno de los 100 finalistas de startups de todo el mundo y tuvimos la oportunidad de, de ir a Riyadh, a Arabia Saudita. Bueno, no sé si han visto de fotos de Arabia Saudita, es un lugar increíble, eh, muy hermoso, muy interesante porque hace más o menos cuatro años recién han comenzado a aceptar turistas con invitación. Entonces, para las personas que vayan a, este, a esta competición a representar a Bolivia, ojalá que, que nos escojan ¿no? como Bolivia, eh, van a tener un privilegio porque no, no mucha gente puede entrar a este país. Entonces, sin duda, es un lugar increíble. Eh, bueno... Nosotros en, en el IWC les explico, eh, bueno, en las finales cómo funcionó. Eh, las que llegamos, bueno, nos explican todo un lugar hermoso donde ahorita les voy a mostrar fotos y es más, les voy a mostrar más mis experiencias y las fotos, ¿no? Eh, lo partieron en cuatro grupos donde veían que eran negocios bien similares, ¿no? Entonces, entre los 100 habían cuatro grupos de 25, cada uno en una esquina. Era increíble el evento, ahorita voy a mostrar unas fotos y ahí tenías que hacer la presentación de tres minutos y tener jurados de muy alto nivel donde era muy complejo, ¿no? Eh, bueno, en ese momento, Juan Javier, mi hermano y cofundador de, de Biospet también, eh, presentó, presentó y la verdad que lo hizo increíblemente y fuimos seleccionados en las semifinales, lo que significa que entramos en el top 40 de 100.000 participantes en ese momento dado, ¿no? Eh, bueno, en las semifinales fue una etapa muy dura porque la verdad que eh, lo, 
los emprendimientos o las startups que habían eran demasiado alto nivel, eh, fue una competencia muy dura, con decirle que habían startups que facturaban más de un millón de dólares mensual, con ese, o sea, eran muy fuertes, habían bancos, habían tecnologías de banco, tecnología de robo, eh, autos eléctricos que funcionaban, tractores, ¿no? Era, era increíble, hacían tomates de agua salada, habían de todo, ¿no? Entonces ya en las semifinales te quebraban en cinco grupos y no era que ya presentabas, sino que vos ibas y directo hablabas con cinco inversionistas. Eh, para mala suerte creo que nosotros no teníamos mucha experiencia de, 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 de estar con inversionistas al frente y pudimos defendernos porque mal que mal teníamos muy buena atracción eh, en ese momento dado, eh, pero hubieron preguntas que la verdad que nos dejaron ahí en jaque y bueno, lamentablemente no pasamos a las finales, pero sin duda fue un orgullo increíble acabar el top 40 de 100.000 participantes, ¿no? Entonces realmente ahí creo que sacamos la cara por Bolivia, fuimos los segundos de Sudamérica y, y es un orgullo porque todos sabemos que el ecosistema de, de, de startups en Bolivia recién está naciendo y tenemos como Brasil, Argentina, eh, Paraguay, Chile, Perú, todos ellos están mucho más avanzados y la verdad que el único que sacó mejor posición fue Argentina. Entonces, la verdad que fue muy buen resultado. Eh, bueno, para mostrarles cómo era el evento, creo que entraban más o menos, no sé, una, miles de personas, la verdad era inmenso, porque igual le iba para la izquierda y había más escenarios atrás, habían cuartos cerrados, entonces aquí era donde se presentaba las finales, eh, el, el último día eso estaba lleno. Eh, aquí eran las esquinas que le hablaba, donde partieron en cuatro a los grupos, y aquí eh, se presentaban ¿no? con los jurados, era muy interesante. Eh, bueno, aquí hay un poco de fotos de donde está mi hermano presentando, haciendo la presentación eh, Yo y Juan Javier aquí en el escenario, en uno de los escenarios Y bueno, esta pésima foto que he dicho que era la mejor <risa> Aparezco yo con un cerrado Nos entregaron poleras, bueno, a todos, a todos los participantes Una polera de recuerdo que la verdad que la seguimos teniendo Y sin duda es un orgullo tenerla Otra cosa que recalcó mucho eh, fue el turismo, la verdad eh, Obviamente, nuevamente estar en en ese país, Arabia Saudita, un país muy raro que la verdad que nunca esperaba estar ahí, eh, creamos muchísimas amistades de todas partes del mundo, eh, tuvimos la oportunidad de ir a ferias igual, porque obviamente es intenso y estás practicando tu, tu pitch, estás practicando tu presentación, es más, durante todos los días vos estás tratando de mejorarla, ¿no? pero obviamente cuando ya, ya acaba o quedas eliminado, tenés la oportunidad de conocer el país, eh, la ciudad de Riyadh, que es muy linda, ¿no? Creo que lo mejor que hicimos y espero que, estoy seguro que uno, por lo menos un boliviano va a estar yendo a Riyadh y que se contacte con nosotros, que seguimos teniendo los números de los guías y fuimos a ver un, un no sé cómo llamarlo, pero se llamaba como que el final, de hecho de, 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 de World se llama y es una caída increíble y es puro desierto, ¿no? Y ahí fuimos, tuvimos una experiencia increíble porque en la noche después andamos con las luces apagadas en el desierto y fue una experiencia única. Eh, la verdad que, que increíble, increíble, sin explicación y nuevamente eh, les muestro esto igual para que las personas que entren en etapa de aceleración realmente se rajen porque ir a Riyad es un sueño, un sueño que tal vez uno nunca va a poder ir, ¿no? Eh, bueno, y creo que lo más importante que rescato de, este, de, este, de esta competición, uno es el networking, eh, bueno, a, mi foto, a la izquierda tengo una foto con Jeff Hoffman, no sé si lo conocen, pero bueno, este es un emprendedor, eh, uno de los más reconocidos mundialmente, ya, ya ha vendido dos unicornios, entonces es mucha cosa, una de ellas es Priceline, que seguramente muchos de ellos la conocen, él igual es el creador de los kios para sacar eh, tickets aéreos, entonces, en vez de ir al counter, vos sacás tu banquillo y sacás ¿no? tu, tu boleto. Entonces, la verdad que mucha cosa, eh, Jeff. Tengo una anécdota muy chistosa con él, de que, bueno, él se juntó un rato, mientras antes de, antes de entrar a la semifinal estábamos hablando con todos y obviamente hablando de experiencias, ¿no? Y él, y él obviamente era el que más participaba entre todos. Y, y yo de curioso voy y le hablo, le sigo hablando y al día siguiente cuando me saco esa foto le digo, Jeff, podemos tener una reunión, quiero presentar de mi proyecto, eh, le vendo mi charque como diríamos, y el obvio, eh, el tipazo ¿no? me pasa su número y me dice, dale, eh, mañana a las 7 de la mañana en el desayuno nos juntamos y bueno, nos pillamos ahí. 
Para mi mala suerte estoy a las 7 de la mañana y me llega un mensaje a las 7 y 02, 7 y 02 y me dice, Andrés, mil disculpas, voy a llegar tarde, pero tengo una reunión con la G20. Eh, creo que los que sepan que la G20 es, es la reunión de presidentes de los 20 países más importantes. Y bueno, en ese momento querían ver, hablar de unos temas de economía y lo necesitaban a, al señor Jeff Hoffman. Y bueno, lamentablemente, obviamente, tuvo que cancelar y su agenda era muy ocupada. Entonces, después de eso, la verdad que, que fue... Que ya no me junté en persona, pero seguí hablando un poco con él. ¿no? Eh, y bueno, y hablando de networking, como ven, ahí están todas las personas y participantes, eh, todo por distintas partes del mundo. Eh, y, y algo que me gusta mucho es que todavía hay un grupo de todos los, los 100 finalistas donde obviamente compartimos muy buena información y si estás interesado en un país o querés algo en específico o estás buscando lo que sea, eh, ese grupo sin duda vale mucho y, y, y bueno, es, es un resource muy, muy bueno, ¿no? que, que, que está mucha información y... y bueno, y pues también lo último que era hermoso y que me acordé ahorita es, es que sabes que estás con gente que habla tu mismo lenguaje. Eh, puede ser que, que muchas veces vos estás metido en tu startup y hablas de un lenguaje que todos tus amigos, y, y todos estos hablaban el mismo lenguaje, tenían la misma ambición, querían crecer como vos, tenían el sueño loco, hablaban de, su, de, de sus éxitos, hablaban de sus fracasos, hablaban de sus proyectos, y realmente era un ambiente, era único, era único, y nunca estaba en un ambiente así tan lleno de... De, 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 de emprendedores y, y fue algo que me encantaría volver, eh, volver a, a repetir y bueno, para que esté llegado estamos ahí, seguimos los sí, ayer y bueno, sé que tengo 20 minutos pero la verdad que mmm, no quería tomar mucho tiempo de hablar eh, sobre mi persona o mi experiencia, quería más bien dejarle eh, el espacio también para hacer preguntas eh, que puedan hacer preguntas porque me imagino que deben de, bueno, tal vez tengan algunas preguntas estén curiosos de cómo fue o, o, o qué no sé, tips les puedo dar eh, y eso y ahí están mi mail igual por si están interesados en, en escribirme y bueno, creo que <ríe> el típico mío no presenté lo que es envío bueno, mencioné no, mentira, mentira me chipea entonces, si alguien quiere hacer una pregunta, no sé si, la verdad, si, si puedan. Eh, bienvenido a cualquier pregunta. Gracias, Andrés. Eh, sí, por favor, si tuvieran alguna pregunta, pueden hacerla. Eh, ya el jurado está terminando de deliberar, pero tenemos por lo menos unos cinco minutos más. Fernando, no sé si puedo hacer una pregunta. Hola, ¿cómo está, Denis? Buena. Claro, pregunte, por favor. Bueno, la pregunta que quería hacer, eh, bueno, según tu vivencia ya que has compartido con personas de otros países, ¿qué debía hacerse primero acá en Bolivia? ¿no? Tú dijiste ya el ecosistema recién un poco se estaba dinamizando. Eh, pero ¿cuál sería lo que tendríamos que empezar ya nomás, digamos, ¿no? para poder hacer eh, un ecosistema que sea por lo menos acorde a nuestros vecinos, ¿no? Eso sería, gracias. Eh, sin duda, sin duda ya hemos empezado, solo que creo que somos muy nuevos y, y lo que yo creo, no, no significa que, que estoy en lo correcto, pero lo que yo creo que nos falta casos de éxito para salir adelante. Esto es igual que creo que un deporte, cuando vos tenés un deportista que gana torneos internacionales o es exitoso internacionalmente, toda la tandada de abajo va a comenzar a seguirse, especialmente porque se la cree que esto es posible, ¿no? Entonces, hoy en día tenemos probablemente cinco startups contadas con la mano que están abriendo camino y es muy difícil, ¿no? Eh, pero estoy seguro que se va a ir generando una atracción. Cada vez esto se va a hacer más grande, entonces cada vez más gente se va animando, entonces hay más startups. Acuérdense que, y, y la realidad es esta, ¿no? De que del 100% de startups que, com, que comienzan, va a haber un 10% que, que llega tal vez al tercer año, o al cuarto año, o al quinto año. Entonces necesitamos más masa de startups y, y de emprendimiento para que surtan y sean grandes, y, y bueno, el ecosistema siga creciendo. Pero sin duda ya hemos arrancado y creo que de una buena manera ya hay más de tres aceleradoras por ejemplo, hay hartas organizaciones tenemos IWC por ejemplo entonces vamos un buen camino pero hay que aceptar lo que estamos atrás que otros países
Hello, everybody. Andres, how is, how is it? Everybody happy? Well, uh, uh, you, know, you know the big problem that we have. Huh? Everybody is good. Everybody can be there. Happens two times already in the last two years. And now we have to give the answers. And the jury has the word. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to invite uh, Freddy to give us a, a speech, and then uh, Cecilia, uh, then uh, Enrique, and finally Ezra. And we're going to finish the whole thing. Uh, remember, please, that Bolivia has two spaces to go to the acceleration too. That means that we, were, we won't have a, a first one, second, third, or whatever. The only thing we're going to do is we're going to say these two are the ones that are going. And the rest are winners, as, as you know from the beginning. Uh, Rene, one question. Uh, the, the speech will be in English, should be in English, because I will feel more comfortable to speak uh, in Spanish for all Spanish? of them. Okay. okay? Uh, everybody raise your hand if you want to do it in Spanish or English. In Spanish? In Spanish, okay. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Uh, eh, let's, let's start with Freddy. Ok, bueno, muchas gracias y felicidades a todos los que participaron. Realmente fue muy grato haber escuchado tan bonitas eh, iniciativas, proyectos. Eh, estoy contento de escuchar y ver cada vez más proyectos relacionados con temas ambientales, con sostenibilidad, con circularidad, con gestión de los residuos. Uno piensa que el futuro está lleno de proyectos tecnológicos, que la vida está llena de proyectos tecnológicos, un mundo tecnológico es el que nos imaginamos en el futuro. Sin embargo, el, el mundo del futuro es el mundo en el que un humano está mucho más conectado con su medio ambiente, mucho más conectado con el bosque, eh, con los servicios ambientales. Y entonces, el ver eh, proyectos que buscan preservar el futuro y proteger lo que viene para las generaciones que vienen delante de nosotros, pues es muy gratificante. En ese sentido, pues muchas gracias a todos aquellos que están con estas ideas de tener un mundo mejor para todos. Gracias, René. Perfecto. Cecilia, por favor. Bueno, eh, felicitar a cada uno de los participantes. Eh, ha sido una noche muy agradable, de mucho aprendizaje, de mucha exposición. Y eh, a felicitar eh, como mujer a las mujeres emprendedoras que han presentado sus proyectos. Realmente son cosas muy interesantes las que han hecho. Y como nutricionista, eh, realmente un aplauso a los, a los eh, emprendimientos de alimentos eh, que, tratan de, que están resaltando la maravilla de, eh, de comida y materia prima que tenemos aquí en Bolivia que es eh, realmente desconocida en gran parte del mundo. Entonces, eh, un aliento para que continúen eh, con hacer conocer eh, sus productos. Eh, felicitaciones a todos. Como han dicho todos los jueces, aquí todos son ganadores. Y mm, muchísima suerte a todos en el futuro y en sus proyectos. Gracias, Cecilia. Eh, ahora estamos con Enrique. ¿Está por ahí? Sí, aquí ando. Muy bien, no te vi. Sí. Eh, bueno, para no ser repetitivo de lo que ya dijeron las personas que me antecedieron el micrófono, eh, voy a obviar las felicitaciones. La verdad es que es muy gratificante atestiguar el crecimiento de Bolivia. Eh, muy altamente gratificante. Eh, a mí me corresponde, si, estás en lo, si estoy en lo correcto, René, ya mencionar a uno de los finalistas, de los ganadores, ¿correcto? Nada más para no cometer el error. Correcto. Ya vamos okay. para... Eh, aquí vamos a encontrar ya con uno de los finalistas que van para eh, la aceleración 2. Bueno, miren, eh, como bien dijo Cecilia, aquí en este tipo de ejercicios no hay... Eh, no, no se gana y se pierde, se gana y se aprende y se gana y se crece. Evidentemente, algunos de ustedes, como pudieron atestiguar, van muy avanzados en sus procesos, otros están empezando, otros están descubriendo, eh, otros están afinando. Eh, a mí me corresponde eh, mencionar al primer eh, finalista, 
Eh, hace 40 años China declaró que quería acabar con la pobreza. Hace 40 años China dijo que tenía que sacar de la pobreza a 400 mil, 400 mil millones de chinos. Hace 10 años China dijo nos quedan 100 mil millones de chinos. Hace unos meses China dijo ya no tenemos pobreza. Yo no sé si extrema pobreza, yo no sé si pobreza, lo que sí es que China acaba de decir que finalmente cumplió su objetivo. Una de las grandes este, metas que se puso fue, eh, le llaman leapfrog, un, un salto de rana. Este, ellos no entraron a la cuestión de las tecnologías, a, a, la, a la monetización. Digitalizaron las monedas, digitalizaron las monedas, eso les vino a repercutir que hoy estén al tú por tú con una de las potencias, con la potencia mundial que Estados Unidos, compitiendo por el mercado internacional. Razón por la cual nosotros seleccionamos a Blink como uno de los finalistas. <ríe> aplauso, aplauso, ya los vi ahí, ¿qué están haciendo? Como uno de los finalistas. Eh, la verdad es difícil, como dijo René, sin embargo, la decisión la tomamos porque queremos que una... Eh, eh, innovación, una tecnología salga de Bolivia, salga de Latinoamérica no va a ser fácil Blink, va a haber muchos, muchas propuestas como las de ustedes, muchas, porque esto es lo que está en el mercado actualmente esto es lo que van a es, va a ser difícil la competencia pero el solo hecho de que vayan y representen a, a Bolivia y a Latinoamérica y nos traigan ese conocimiento y nos permitan crecer yo creo que aquí tienen doble responsabilidad la otra es cómo le van a hacer para hacer crecer a todos los que participaron el día de hoy con ustedes. Entonces, muchas felicidades, Blin. Gracias. 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 Nuestro compromiso es jalar a todo el ecosistema. Muchísimas gracias, de verdad. René, a todos, de verdad, estamos muy, muy felices y emocionados. Gracias. Gracias, de verdad. Gracias. Gracias, gracias jurados, y gracias a todos. Vamos, Suerte. Marina, vamos, Vamos, Blinkers. Go, Blinkers. <ríe> Tomo la palabra entonces. Erra, por favor, adelante. Antes que haya más antes, antes silencio. Que, antes que haya algún infarto por ahí de la emoción. Bueno, la verdad que siento un honor de, de anunciar al, al siguiente finalista que va a representar de la mejor manera a Bolivia y en realidad al continente, a toda Latinoamérica. Eh, hay pocos proyectos que son altamente innovadores, socialmente responsables y además amigables con el medio ambiente y que tengan adicional una propuesta ganadora como, lo, como la que hemos visto y que como jurados hemos acordado de dar a Mamut la oportunidad de ir a representar a nuestro continente con el honor que se merece esto. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias. Gracias por, por las palabras y gracias por la oportunidad. Creo que una de las cosas que tenemos como responsabilidad también es apoyar el ecosistema y hoy día yo me he sentido muy feliz de ver grandes proyectos con grandes competencias y, y realmente para mí esa ha sido una de las satisfacciones más grandes. Antes éramos unos, dos, tres, como decía anteriormente el de PET, y ahora hemos visto que hay eh, 15 proyectos muy interesantes de muchas personas que están demostrando que desde Bolivia tenemos la visión de generar proyectos eh, con un mercado global, ¿no? Y esa es un poco la valentía que están teniendo los bolivianos y esto es una muestra de que existe un desarrollo económico en Bolivia a través de la, de la, de la conocimiento y más aún viendo la sostenibilidad como una herramienta de competitividad, ¿no? Es decir, se puede ganar dinero a través de generar estos impactos en la sociedad. Gracias, Manuel. Eh, felicidades, Henry. Felicidades a todos, la verdad. Eh, I think what we have done tonight is something that is really different from everything that we do every day. It's, it's really, really, really hard to be in this side, uh, trying to choose uh, one of you to be part of the rest uh, of the world. But uh, I think we, we have done a lot of things together. There is more to do. Um, I'm really compromised with everybody to keep on going. Uh, Bolivia is doing great in startups. Uh, we are uh, doing uh, three times more than we were doing uh, two, day, two years ago. And uh, as I mentioned this uh, morning in the newspaper, I think in the last 
10 months, we have done more than the last three years uh, doing startups. And uh, you, are the, you are the proof. You are the ones that are doing a lot of things in Bolivia. And I want to thank you to be here. I want to thank you to be part of this entrepreneurship workshop. And I congratulate Mahmoud and also Blind, but uh, also all of you, because if you really being in, in the other side, in this case, from the jury side, uh, that was hard, hard to decide who was going to be there. But uh, that's life. Once uh, you get it, next time will be the next. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations. And yes, Cecilia, please go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I, I don't want this to end. Eh, no quiero que esto termine sin que comentemos que eh, entre la deliberación del jurado hemos eh, hablado de una, una, un emprendimiento que está en early stage que merece un gran reconocimiento que es WUF. Y quería, uh, no quería irme esta Hoy noche día. sin felicitarte Alejandro y, 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 y decirte que se ha comentado mucho tu emprendimiento. Felicidades. Muchísimas gracias. Muchísimas gracias. Sí. Y felicidades a todos los ganadores. Perdón, René, Soy por un ganador. Perdón por no, no. René. Está bien, está bien, está clarísimo. Eh, la verdad, Alejandro, sos ganador, así como también Efre, eh, está aquí todo, todos los que están presentes, se me fueron los nombres, hay varios. Pero eh, en ese mensaje que le dio Cecilia Alejandro, eh, se va para todos. Eh, nuevamente decirles de que Uh, next year, we're going to be here and we're going to do it better. If we made a mistake in something, sorry, but uh, we'll try to do it best next time. Thanks a lot. Gracias. Un abrazo para todos. Gracias, Fernando, gracias. gracias. Un abrazo. Un abrazo a todos. Gracias. Gracias a todos y felicidades. Gracias, felicidades. Gracias a todos. Gracias. Keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. Un saludo a todos. Gracias, gracias. 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 gracias.